So I made the decision to switch from Windows to Linux, specifically Zorin OS. There's a lot of things I like about it. And there's a lot of things I don't like about it. I'll, I'll get to that here in a second. I didn't get any actual video of my experience with Zorin, so you're just going to have to be looking at my pretty face. Hi. Installation was a huge pain for me, but I think that was primarily due to plain stupidity. At first, I used what Zorin recommended, which was Bolina Edger, but I found that my laptop, which is a Predator, that came out wrong, wasn't accepting any USBs that Bellina Etcher was putting out. No matter what settings I changed or any tutorials that I looked up, it just wasn't working. Eventually I looked into alternatives and tried Rufus, and it worked first try, so I don't know what happened there. Upon launching from the USB, it gave me three options and I selected NVIDIA Performance Mode, and it spat out a ton of errors. At. Again, I've tried different things now and this was due to something that I did, but as a user coming in with no previous Linux experience, this is pretty rocky. So I had to go with the first option, which is just plain Zorin OS. Later, I would come to regret this decision. <laughs> and whenever I installed Zorin, they give you the option to dual boot Windows and Zorin, and dual booting wasn't working for me. Anytime I tried to do it, it would spit some kind of error, and I spent hours trying to find a solution and nothing was happening. I think, again, it was something to do with the USB I was booting onto, I don't know, but it was a huge pain in my rear, and I ended up just wiping Windows and going straight for Zorin. And to be truthful, the entire time I used Zorin, I really enjoyed using Zorin. It felt clean, it was easily customizable, it felt much more secure than Windows, and also I didn't have Microsoft shoved in my face every 5 seconds. That was really nice. It ran smooth, everything loaded much quicker, I got this little clip right here. Overall just a general better experience. And if I was only using this computer for general workplace stuff, I would have stayed on Zorin. But unfortunately I'm a content creator and that requires editing softwares. Linux does not like editing softwares. For context, I've been trained in Vegas Pro and CapCut. I can do Premiere, I don't want to. <laughs> CapCut would not work on Zorin no matter how hard I tried. I tried using all kinds of different solutions to get CapCut installed. I even went to the forum to ask for solutions and they basically told me you're SOL unless you want to put another two days of effort in, and I didn't want to do that. So I had to grit my teeth and go to DaVinci Resolve. I've had a little bit of experience with DaVinci Resolve, but it's just not my cup of tea. I know some people like it, including these people I'm listening here. I can't remember anybody except for Otterly for some reason, and cats, but it just wasn't for me. But I had to learn because otherwise, how am I going to make videos? So you may have noticed the gap in videos lately. <laughs> I had a bigger issue that whenever I loaded anything into DaVinci, it wasn't, you know, showing up. I learned that apparently Zorin or any Linux distribution wouldn't handle video the same way. I had to use a custom script to be able to transcode these videos into the correct format. I couldn't just record on OBS and then plug it into DaVinci. But even when I did that, I found it just wasn't worth messing with DaVinci to be able to edit my videos on. It was slower, more convoluted, and just generally took much longer to edit on than my previous softwares. I managed to get my other softwares working like Fire Alpaca and Modrinth. Modrinth decided to just implode later down the line, which basically forced my hand to swap back because Flipside is still going on. But I couldn't edit any videos. My animator worked just fine, except at one point it just disappeared from the computer. After I did a reinstallation, it went just fine from there. Now on to the really bad stuff. I really like fighting, and I'm even working on a video essay that's coming up, and that's going to be coming out soon. With the PH. Fighting with the PH. <laughs> and turns out that a couple months prior to me installing Zorin, Roblox has been actively fighting against Linux users. They blocked Wine, which is what Linux users use to play on, you know, Windows games, because most games aren't compatible with Linux. There's another program, I'm not going to say the name because I'm no snitch, but if you are a Linux user and you want to play Roblox, I'm sure you could find it fairly quickly as I did, but it took some searching. And that worked 
okay. It's still in early access, so a lot of things were changing while I was using the software. I couldn't change my camera sensitivity for the first few weeks, and then that option just appeared, and I looked like a fool while telling my girlfriend about it. And the frame rates were just abysmal. The first drivers that Zorin came with out of the box just were not working for my laptop, which is running on a 4070. 4060. It's running on 4060. I don't know why I said 70. And I tried about 10 different drivers, and there were some drivers that would run this program on 120 frames per second. But my other monitor wasn't launching. It wasn't connecting to my other monitor. Then I had the issue where it would be running just fine, but then it would just freeze my monitor anytime anything remotely heavy happened. And then there were some drivers that just were slow. Eventually, I found, I think it was 555 is what I landed on, and that was kind of the sweet spot. I had to sacrifice some quality, but still, in order to play without huge frame skips, without huge frame skips, that's why I had to land on. And that was a huge pain. What I just described to you took several days to figure out. It wasn't a simple cut process. NVIDIA recommended 560, but that didn't work either. Everything else with Zorin felt clean, and I really, really like Zorin. If Linux was more beginner friendly, which I know... Hello. Which I know a lot of Linux diehards will get up in my face about how, oh, it's meant for developers. Well, how is Linux... Mochi, that's not yours. Nope. She's trying to eat my food. Mochi, that's not yours. Okay. <gasps> oh no! No! I just spilled ranch everywhere. <laughs> oh, I don't want my hand towel. How is Linux supposed to grow if people who know Windows or even Mac OS can barely use it? Installing any kind of software always led to some kind of problem. Installing Steam, at some point I managed to get two different versions of Steam running on two different things. One was from the software store that Zorin offers, and the other was from apt-get. I don't even know how I managed to do that, and one worked and one didn't. So anytime I wanted to use Steam, I had to kind of guess which one to use. Eventually I used software called Lutris, and Lutris worked perfectly fine. Until it didn't. <laughs> One day I tried to launch a game and then it said I have to install Umu. And I thought, okay, I'll just do apt get install Umu. Umu didn't exist. And I tried for about four hours and Umu just would not build all kinds of different dependency problems over and over over and over again. Just some kind of problem kept arising and eventually it just kept giving me errors and no matter how hard I tried, I could not get it to work. Eventually I had to come to grips with that. If I want to continue editing and doing graphic design, I just can't stick with Zorin. It's just not really oriented for people like me. So I decided I need to swap back to Windows Pronto. Little did I know I was signing up for a four day limbo of hell to be able to swap back to Windows. It's difficult to describe how painful this was. I'll go ahead and show the forum right now, but I had to open a help forum. I tried multiple different installers. I tried multiple different ways of writing to the bootable USB. I tried Wo USB. I tried Rufus on Wine. I tried Etcher, which eventually worked, but still had problems. And it was just such a pain. To describe to you the final solution, First, I had to create a bootable drive to be able to launch Zorin on the USB. So then I could separate the partition and unmount it and then format it to a format that Windows liked. And still, Windows wasn't recognizing it. I talked to a good friend of mine, Dungeon Robot, and he was a huge help, specifically his friend who somehow just knew the solution. But after about four days, I couldn't get this to work. And I was just about to give up and say, crap, I'm gonna have to either turn in my laptop with a warranty or I'm gonna be doomed to Zorin forever. <laughs> I think my friend Smorks put it best when he said, the only operating system you need is me. What I had to do is first I just formatted my NVMe just entirely, scrapped everything on it, and still it didn't show up, but they also recommended that I look up my laptop's official drivers, storage drivers specifically, put those into the files in the USB and then load those. And I had to go searching through multiple different drivers, I tried installing about 10, and eventually, I got the right one, and then the correct driver finally showed up, and I was finally able to install Windows without a hitch. The only hitch was that none of the drivers were installed, so I had to put the internet driver on the USB and then install it on here, and it was weird, but I got it working. That's just part of installing Windows. I'm just dumb. <laughs> and it was a big pain. Uh, it, it, oh my gosh. 
it's genuinely frustrating to me how much I like Zorin and how clean and secure it feels but I just can't stay with it due to software incompatibility and other general issues I had. For example, it ate through my battery much faster despite me trying my best to optimize the battery. It comes with all kinds of great alternative softwares like LibreOffice, I think I'm saying that correctly. Hello, Mochi. And you're on my desk. Okay. And that's great and all, but when those things break, that kind of leaves me in the dark. So if you're not a content creator and you just use your computer for work, genuinely, I would recommend Zorin OS. It works just fine in that sense. But if you like gaming and if you like editing in any kind of way, it is just not for you. I hate to say it. Whoa! <laughs> Mochi, you can't be doing that. You can't be- no. You have anything to say to the viewers? Real words. Anyways, thanks for watching my rant. A uh, new video coming soon featuring Mustard from Mustard. Bye.